Hello everybody. Um, happy Monday. I hope everybody had a nice weekend. Um, so before we get into unit two, uh, which you guys already all started because you watched the Chuck Close biography. But before we talk about that, I just want to say thank you to everyone that submitted a project for unit one. Um, I really enjoyed looking at your blind contour portraits, but what I enjoyed even more was seeing everybody online last week um, and hearing you guys all critique each other's work and seeing um, almost all of you all in one space. So thank you guys for participating in that critique. Um, so let's go ahead and get into unit two. So um, by the time you guys are watching me, you would have watched the video biography on Chuck Close. So we are taking um, full inspiration um, from his process to work on this final project. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about the final project as the week goes along. Um, but I want to take a little bit of time to debrief the video that you all watched. So why does he draw from photographs? So he draws from photographs because growing up he had um, a learning disability and part of that disability kept him from being able to recognize people's faces. Um, so he tells the story how, about how when he was in kindergarten, he had a hard time telling the difference between the students in his class and the students in the other kindergarten class. And as he grows up and finds his passion in art, um, he really valued art as a way to hang on to people's faces, something that he couldn't do in his life. Um, and also just practically, um, if he worked from a live model and the model moves, he wouldn't be able to capture their face because anytime they moved, he would forget. He would not be able to recognize that person's face. So the photograph is also a practical tool. So why does he use a grid? So he gives a couple reasons for why he works with the grid. So the first reason um, is because it's just easier for him to think about a big project in smaller pieces. So he talks a little bit about um, this being, you know, part of his disability, but I will argue that this tool is helpful for all of us, especially artists that aren't quite as confident, being able to think about this kind of intimidating portrait and looking at it in small pieces. So that's one of the main reasons why he uses the grid. The second is, you know, it's a really effective tool to blow up, to enlarge an image. He briefly talks about how um, since the beginning of time, right, Egyptians used the grid, used the grid, used the grid method as a way to blow things up, to make things bigger. Um, so he's just capturing that technique in his own work. Um, and in the video, kind of from minute six to minute eight, you see the process of how he does that. So you um, get a glimpse, a little glimpse of him and his team um, working on enlarging a photograph into a huge canvas. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that process, but it's ultimately taking a clear sheet of um, acetate or transparency, um, drawing a grid on that and laying it over a photograph and then mimicking that same grid, the same proportions onto a bigger surface. Um, and then you you can draw what you see on in the photograph onto a larger surface. And we'll talk a lot more about that. Um, yeah, so that's why and how he uses the grid technique. So the last thing I will ask you all to think about in watching the video is um, whether or not you preferred the grid kind of being a secret in his work or if you preferred him kind of utilizing um, and working the grid actually into the image. So he talks a little bit about how um, in his earlier works, he hid the grid. Um, and in his later works, he kind of embraced the grid and used those as ways to add more color or more dimension or more texture to his portraits. Um, I honestly personally couldn't tell you which I prefer. Um, I love the hyper-realistic images. I think they're um, just like technically impressive, but I think the his later works where he um, really colors in each grid, and you, and you can tell the squ each square from each square from the other square. I think there's something really interesting and fun about that work. I especially like the one that he's working on in the video, um, where each square is just one solid color. I think there's something really interesting about that pixelated look. So I'm curious what you all think. 